short video on how to diagnose and fix an air leak on the intake manifold of a Zenoa clone. This is called a FIHU. Uh, it's, it's advertised as 45 cc, but in reality it was a 52 cc. The Zenoa clones are all pretty much identical, but for the top uh, cover. Uh, so the first thing you want to do when you diagnose these is remove your top cover. Go ahead and then you can remove the air filter too. Uh, and, and when you go after this, you want brake cleaner. Find some brake cleaner and then start spraying. And the place you want to spray, and sometimes it's good just to get that top cover off. Uh, you don't need to do that when you're first starting to uh, diagnose. But you need to be able to get the spray, the brake cleaner in, in places like this. And right there, where you can see where I'm pointing, right behind that heat shield. That is a highly suspect area for an air leak. And they come from the factory this way. This one was from the factory. It was hard to keep it running. And uh, by taking it loose, I could see uh, where the intake manifold meets the uh, cylinder head. You could see where dust and fine particles had been drawn in around the gasket. Now, I don't know if it was uh, not tight enough. A lot of people say that it's not tight enough to get to it. Uh, others will argue that um, that it, that is some kind of a defect and it's just not flat or it's cracked. I fixed this one by putting in just a little bit of gasket seal over the top of that gasket and then tightening it up really tight. Now I'm talking the intake manifold. That's what this connects to. So let me let me first start through uh, from this point. Um, when you when you spray brake cleaner in right there, and if it dies. Uh, that means you probably have an air leak. And you can test various places around the machine to see if you have an air leak in other places, but this is the most suspect. Uh, right in, let me try to get it right in behind here. You can see where I'm putting my screwdriver right in there. So I spray brake cleaner in, it dies, I went back in, I took it all apart, and it is difficult to get it apart. Part. Actually, it's easy to get it apart. It's difficult getting it back together because of one rubber gasket. So my suggestion is when you do this and start taking it apart, you take photos everywhere you go. The first thing you're going to do is remove these two bolts, one on each side. And I'd photograph that carefully, photograph your connections where the carburetor goes, and especially there's a little block right there. A little block that has to go back in. You also have another piece that comes out. You want photos of all these things. That goes in right in there uh, so that you know how to get them back together. So once you take these two screws out, the whole carburetor comes out, and then you are right at this heat shield. And then you're going to find a little brass ring and a rubber seal. You need to remove the brass ring and then the uh, heat shield and then the plastic part right there come out. Now the plastic has two screws. There's one right here and then there's one straight down right here. So you get those two out and that's have to come off of that rubber intake manifold that had the little brass ring in it. And then you figure out why the, uh, why the gasket was leaking put it back together but to get it back together you have to take that rubber ring and push it through through the the plastic piece through the heat shield and then you will have a round or an oval shaped rubber that has to be pushed through that also before you put the brass ring back in uh, I did this one. It probably took me 45 minutes to take it apart and put it back together, but most of the time was spent trying to get that reassemble that that round rubber into the uh, oval-shaped gasket uh, and then, then get the brass ring back in. But once I did it, I tested it again using brake cleaner and while running, and uh, it ran fine. So the, the air leak was clearly in that intake manifold. But what a pain in the butt putting it back together. Once you do one, it won't be so bad. But just remember, get photos of everything. And it'll make it so much easier. Actually, you could even put a video camera up and video sell it, tape yourself doing it. Uh, this is a great little chainsaw. I, I think I bought it on uh, Amazon for about $45. Uh, they said it was used, but it's really an open box. Uh, the Zenoa clones are great. I love them. So good luck on your Zenoa clone. Please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video that didn't have a five-minute introduction.